In this video we're going to set up a very basic 2D model. We do this to get an understanding of the overland flow paths in the catchment and to understand where to put the detail later on. We're going to have a look at model extents, 2D zone parameters, meshing and committing with validation. To set the model extents we select the polygon tool from the GeoPlan tools and we start tracing the yellow outline on the aerial. I like to start in the top left hand corner and go clockwise so that I know where I'm going. Double click to close the polygon and we'll give it the name 2D Zone and the type will be 2D Zone. You'll notice that the properties turn up in the left hand side. We've got an area of about 35 hectares uh, and we're going to change the maximum triangle area to 20 and then I'm going to change the minimum element area to 2. So this really depends on what kind of model you're doing. Uh, you want it to be able to define the topography that you've got underneath the mesh uh, but also look at the limitations of your ICM license. Uh, I'm going to change the boundary from a vertical wall to a free-flowing outfall which means that once the water gets to the edge of this polygon it's going to be allowed to flow out of the model. I'm going to click on terrain sensitive meshing. This means that instead of the elements just filling the polygon as best they fit it's actually going to have a look at the terrain underneath the mesh and make sure that the triangles are representative of the ground underneath. So where we've got steeper um, banks and where we've got tighter inverts we're going to have more mesh elements than say on the floodplain where it's nice and flat. I'm going to leave the maximum height and the degree angle as the default and the last one I'm going to change is the Manning's roughness. I'm going to change that to 0.035. Uh, I'm going to assume that the base kind of Manning's roughness is short grass. I'm going to use um, direct rainfall on the mesh and I'm going to apply the rainfall everywhere. In this model we don't actually have any subcatchments so whichever option I pick would give me the same results. Now that I've populated my 2D parameters I just need to mesh the 2D zone. So to do that I pick the selection tool, select the 2D polygon and go to model, meshing, mesh 2D zones. The only thing I need to populate is the ground model we're going to have a look at these more advanced features later on. So we go back to the model objects and drag the ground model into there. I'm going to run the meshing on my machine and I'm going to run that now. So click OK. And if I come down to the job control window, you will see that the status is <laughs> now ready. Uh, that was very quick. Uh, you should get a message box to say that that's complete. The row changing green means that that has been completed successfully. To load the mesh we can either click on the mesh ready status or we can go back to the model, meshing and load mesh job. Click on the load the mesh and now I'm going to zoom into my model extents. We can't see the elements yet so we need to go to the properties and themes and on the Elements tab, I'm going to click on Elements Edges. I'm just going to change the colour there and make it fully visible. And then we can see those elements. We should be able to see where the, um, the terrain is steeper. The mesh elements should be tighter, which we can see there on the bank. The last step in completing our basic 2D model is to com commit the changes. Right click on the urban network, commit the changes and remember to give it a nice detailed comment. Click OK and this time we need to validate the model. We can see that in the output window there are no messages which means that the model network is validated which means we can now run a simulation on that network.